Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to Shelf Stories, and also welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop Podcast. I'm your host, Jason. Thank you so much for popping by for this latest Thinking Out Loud, where I turn on the camera and I start to talk about uh, something that is on my mind in board gaming. So this one is a little bit different than some of my other uh, monologues. Uh, a lot of times I have a message and I have something I want to say and I'm pretty direct. You know, I try to come at things multiple perspectives, but at the end of the day, I kind of land on a position. Um, this one is a lot different. I don't know where to land on this one yet. I'm still forming my thoughts. Uh, so I've thought about it a lot and you know, it's time to have some conversations about it. I want to get uh, some people's opinions. I want to get some comments going, uh, interactions going into comments uh, and different places. Uh, so definitely would like to start a conversation about how do we think of art from a problematic artist? Can we separate the art from the artist? Can we enjoy the art when we know certain things <laughs> about the artist? So that, that comes up all over the place. Uh, so the latest uh, version of this that I encountered uh, on Twitter was... A, you know, I think there's a new Harry Potter game. I don't, I don't keep track of Harry Potter video games at all. No draw for me. Uh, but it, re, it evoked the response from a bunch of people in our community and others uh, talking about J.K. Rowling's uh, transphobia. Uh, not a supporter of that community. Retweeting uh, and, and tweeting out some difficult things with, with regards to the trans community. Uh, so, you know, there's this cry. It's like, no, nope, no Harry Potter. No, do not do that. Uh, you know, we're no more Harry Potter. Uh, or anything from J.K. Rowling, it really. I, a couple weeks ago, saw the Michael Jackson musical on Broadway, uh, which was excellent. And, you know, that the main actor uh, did a really great job, won a Tony, which is the awards, uh, for that performance. And, you know, I, I'm watching the show and I'm enjoying it. I'm a huge Michael Jackson fan back in the day, singing along, all the stuff. It, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about some of the things that went on in Neverland. Uh, you could... Look up some of the, you know, I don't want to go into too much detail, but there were some, uh, you know, accusations of child molestation and some pretty shady things that, that went on that, and that were covered up uh, and that were not discussed <laughs> in the uh, sh uh, musical about Michael Jackson. And, you know, we can keep on going. I'm here on the One Stop Co-op Shop talking about this stuff and what's a, a popular IP in our corner of the hobby. H.P. Lovecraft. Cthulhu. Arkham Horror, the card game, and Elder Char, and it's just Cthulhu up and down, uh, our hobby. But, you know, H.P. Lovecraft was an unapologetic, out loud racist. And uh, so much of the fiction, you know, like, it's not like you hit it, uh, there's a lot of things in there that talk about, you know, uh, sub, you know, human uh, peoples and a lot of the difficult stuff. And they don't, it doesn't surface in the board games. Because uh, it's made by different people and who have a whole different perspective. But you go back to the original source material and it is slaps you in the face with abject, unapologetic racism. Are we supporting H.P. Lovecraft's racism by enjoying Cthulhu games today? And to me, this one came out of nowhere, but it totally folds into everything I'm talking about. Uh, so my wife, who is not a gamer, she's a theater person. Uh, she was in a meeting, you know, talking about, you know, preparing uh, her theater group for, you know, the fall and winter and everything. The subject of Handel's Messiah came up. A very, very p uh, famous piece of classical music. Uh, if you don't know the name, you probably know it by hearing it. Uh, and they were talking about uh, just finding out that um, George Friedrich Handel, I think Friedrich, right? That the composer of Messiah, of um Messiah was a slave trader. And so if they play or promote their performance of Handel Messiah, are they, um, you know, propagating Gregor Handel, who was this slave trader? All, all, all down the line. I mean, the school debates and all sorts of stuff. Uh, you can go down the line of uh, our culture just seems to have a real problem uh, with what to think about this. And that's where I want to think about this, right? That's why I want to, I don't want to just like kind of come in with an opinion one way or the other. I want to kind of frame things. And what I'm noticing is that there is a couple of things in Western culture that make it a particular problem for us and how we think about it. 
So first of all, and this is directly um, going back to the whole J.K. Rowling thing, we live in a capitalist system. So we can trademark ideas. And in our system, we take that for granted. Okay, someone comes up with a, a cool original idea, they trademark it, and they you know maintain the copyright and blah, 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 blah. Uh, so they profit from that. So like, you know, you could J.K. Rowling license the IP to a video game maker and, and whoever else, and she's profiting from it. She's fabulously rich uh, because of Harry Potter. So there is a direct material benefit to that being linked, right? So liking the art of a problematic artist in that particular case profits <laughs> materially the problematic artist. So I could, that, that's a whole um, thing. And so that definitely affects the way we think about this stuff. But even when they don't profit, you know, um, Cthulhu is common license IP. Um, Andal's Messiah, you know, that, that thing was written in what, the 1740s? I mean, you, if, there's, uh, if that's not common IP, I don't know what is. Uh, so things that are in the intellectual commons. We still have a tendency in the Western world to want to think of these things individualistically. And we focus on the creator of the thing. And that goes back, right? I mean, it goes back to Greek culture. So you know, like Homer's Iliad and Odyssey. Um, and Aristophanes' is clouds and, you know, on and on. You know, got the Romans. We know some of the Roman playwrights and philosophers and all kind of stuff. On and on. I, we have this cultural thing where we think about the creator as linked to their creation. That's not universal. You know, uh, you think about other cultural forms that, are, you know, go back and back. Uh, you think about stuff from, you know, native cultures, the Mayans, the Incans, the Aztecs, you think of you know, stuff from African cultures. We never go back to individuals in those cultures. We just say, well, that's just Mayan stuff. Uh, that's just, you know, uh, Dahomey or Mali or the different tribes in Africa or other, you know, uh, even like the Norse. Like we don't like center on like, okay, this is this person's or that person's the other person. Like, no, this is Norse uh, mythology. We tend to associate things uh, with a sense of cultural ownership when we're not kind of in the middle of that Western uh, cultural tradition. So what would it do if we regarded some of these more Western things, not as products of the individual creator, but as products of a culture? Harry Potter. What if we didn't associate it so hard with a J.K. Rowling and it's just, you know, some you know, a piece of British lore, uh, you know, or something along those lines. And I got a taste of that. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I went to a birthday party and this was in the hood, right? Uh, you know, very urban feeling, you know, black and brown and different, uh, you know, uh, ethnic uh, ethnicities at this party uh, down in East Haven, Connecticut. Uh, and right in the middle of a, you know, eight-year-old's party, they're doing a Harry Potter themed thing. And they're playing hip hop and they're rapping and they're doing all this stuff. But then all of a sudden it's like, you know, some person with a, a hat and a, um, a robe walks by with the is a Wingardium Leviosa, yo. <laughs> I said to trip. <laughs> and, you know, I was talking to some people, you know, some of the adults, some of the kids like, do you know who wrote this? And they're like, no, I don't care. It's just it's just white people stuff. Uh, and, you know, I enjoy the white people stuff. It's like and that's cool. You know, I you know, I don't talk about cultural borrowing, but like when it, when the people do it, you know, hey, look, you know, if you know black and brown people want to borrow white stuff, white people want to borrow black and brown stuff on the people level. There's no profit. There's no you know seeking for attention. I'm totally cool with that because you can get these you know great cultural mixing. And in that particular case, they didn't care who did it, and that felt very liberating. So here's the idea that I'm playing with. Uh, here, and I'm not saying that people need to think about this. I'm not saying that this is like my final stance. I just, you know, it's something that I wanted to um, continue to explore and put out there for people to consider. This whole idea of uh, can we love art from a problematic artist just seems like a problem of our own making here in Western culture. And, you know, it only makes sense as a problem inside this bubble. And inside the bubble, it's an irreconcilable thing because we, we're so focused on highlighting the artist and associating the artist with the art. And that's not the only way to think about these things as a culture. So the reason why this is so hard to parse is because we can't just step out the bubble, right? Uh, I can't just wave away uh, you know, the recognized copyright that J.K. Rowling has on uh, you know, her you know, creation. So 
you know, that's, that's one thing. Like if, so if you want to like, you know, say, okay, reject that or whatever it is, that's totally fine. I'm cool with that. Um, but in terms of this idea that like, I can never like art if I know anything about the artist, seems like we're cutting off our noses despite our faces. Um, it seems like we give too much weight to the individual creator. I'll go to, uh, Lovecraft. You know, I know Lovecraft had like racist stuff going on, but I'm not supporting H.P. Lovecraft's racism uh, by, you know, enjoying that work. Number one, he borrowed from a lot of things in order to make his, you know, his fiction. He borrowed from Egyptian. He borrowed from, you know, the Antarctic and all that kind of stuff. The age exploration that was happening at that time. It was, he was, you know, he's basically remixing a lot of stuff there. And so it's, I almost think of him like a squatter. Like, I'm not going to respect the rights of a squatter. Like, okay, you did something cool. You had, you know, you made a, you came up with the idea of like a big giant humanoid with the, the octopus tentacles. Like, uh, now all of a sudden, like you own that and that I can't enjoy that because you're a racist. I, that, that feels so wrong to me. Uh, you know, that's that. <laughs> it's, it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the culture. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to think more about the idea of cultural ownership. The culture now owns that work. And the culture is free to do whatever it wants with it. So we want to take that and do all sorts of other stuff. Lovecraft Country. So like we turned the work of a racist. And if you saw the HBO show, which unfortunately canceled, but it was a good show at the time it was on. We're, we put that in the middle of rural South Mississippi. You know, black folks, black issues all over that thing. You know, um, Nikki Valens did a lot with um, the LGBTQ representation when she did her designs in the... Um, the, the Cthulhu universe and, you know, everybody else at Fantasy Flight, obviously, you know, that was a whole team that did that. Uh, so, you know, does that, does that do honor to this person? No, because it's a cultural ownership paradigm. I know I get a little bit <laughs> into this stuff and I, I, I don't want to make it seem like this is the answer. Uh, and it's not, it's just, it is something that I'm passionate about because I don't want to trap us. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of cultural flower and cultural freedom. Uh, let's make what we want and let's not be bound by these, this question that it just seems to me doesn't make sense outside the con the, the context of individualism and capitalism and all that stuff. So once again, that's my ideas. I would love, love to hear what everyone thought out there. You can change your mind and change the world, people. So until next time, lay everybody.